Hello and welcome to Next Generation Behavioral Health. 10 minute tips for modernizing patient care. I'm Dr. Christina Armstrong. And I'm Dr. Julie Kinn. Christy and I have been working in the Department of Defense for several years, and our mission is to use technology like mobile phones, internet, games, and other IT information technology to help military and veteran healthcare. In this podcast, we share answers to the most common questions we hear. And we do it in 10 minutes or you get your money back. So today we're going to be talking about a question we get all the time, which is how can I use apps safely with my patients or clients? And I think today we're specifically going to be talking about mobile apps to get us started in this topic. Yeah, the mobile health apps that we train on are created by the Department of Defense or the um Veterans Administration. <laughs> or the Veterans Administration. Sometimes it's called the Department of Veterans Affairs, so it's tricky, but we could just call it VA for short. People, our listeners will know what we're That's talking right. about. That's right. Yeah. So, and all of these mobile health applications are free and available to anybody in the world, but they are developed primarily for the military population. The one of the most often asked questions is, how do I choose? So the issue is not that there's not enough great high quality mobile health applications out there. The problem for providers seems to be that there are so many great products available that they don't know how to choose. Let me interrupt you for a second. I agree there's tons of really good ones out there, but there's also a lot of stinkers because any mobile app developer can make something that looks legit using really good graphics or taking graphics from a legit agency, but it can be really tricky and confusing to tell, is this actually a high quality evidence-based mobile app or not? So how would you go about deciding what's a good mobile health app to prescribe to a patient? I think I would always defer to something that's been developed by a federal agency within the DOD or VA to start with. From our own experience, we hold our applications to a very high level of security. In fact, the highest that's possible at any time. For example, if I'm looking for something to help with anxiety reduction, I would probably check out some of the places where I know I can find government apps. The VA's National Center for PTSD is a phenomenal source. Googling VA mobile apps, DOD mobile apps is always going to be a good way to get started, especially since all of these applications are useful for civilians as well as military beneficiaries. What I hear you saying, Julie, is that first thing is pick a trusted source. You wouldn't prescribe any resource to a patient if you didn't know where that resource came from. So the benefit of all these DOD and VA mobile health apps that are available are that we know what's in them, we know the security involved, and we can feel safe prescribing them to our patients. But there's also other good apps out there. You don't just have to stick with DOD and VA. I'd say the second rule of thumb is always test it out myself first. I would never recommend an app to a patient or client that I haven't gone through and tested. Plus, a good trick for mobile apps is that on the apps page on iTunes or Google Play where it's describing the app to download it, you can always click on the link for the developer's website. And what we recommend in the trainings is before you recommend any app, always click that link and try to and ask yourself, what is the business model here? If it's a government app, you know the business model, it's paid for by tax dollars, hooray. But if it's a private company, then are they gonna try selling you something? Or are there gonna be ads or extra features that need to be purchased? Um, if it looks like Joe Schmo's app that he made in his basement, it's probably not so trustworthy and check to see if it could be made in a foreign country. We want to make sure we're not going to be recommending to our patients that they, especially service members, that they try to install something that might be made out of the United States. Thinking through security and privacy risk is really important. So service members as well as providers, we really need to be aware of what's really happening um, behind the screen so that we can feel safe about that. Yeah, can you tell us more about the data that's collected in some apps? So one of the biggest questions that patients that we have and providers that we train have is who can see this data? Where is this data going? And so what I explain to the patients, if it is on a DOD or VA app, the data 
that they put into that app is only on the app. It's not going anywhere else unless they are purposely sending it out. And for a lot of our products that we create, that function is actually turned off just because uh, we, we want to reduce any risks. Mm -hmm. A lot of the apps out there, I think, in fact, the majority of apps collect user data, not necessarily your name and social security number and name of your firstborn child, but they do track how you use the app and how often you use it, that kind of usage data. A lot of times it's collected by third party companies and the mobile app makers put it in the app. It's generally a safe thing, but it's not something we do in the DOD and VA. Again, especially when we're talking about service member data, we want to be really careful and especially service member health data, of course. That's right. So one of the questions patients will ask me is, do you see this data? When I put my information in the virtual hope box or T2 mood tracker, are you as a provider tracking what I'm putting in there? And I can assure them that I am not. So there's kind of benefits to that and not such great benefits to that. Yeah, that's a downside (laughs) for sure. As a provider and as a researcher, I wish I could see that data. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the benefits are are that they are sure that that data is safe. It, mm-hmm. What we like to describe it, it's like a little sandbox on their phone. The data is not going anywhere. In fact, if they delete that app, that data is gone. We've here at T2, we've had many times people contacting us saying, hey, on accident, I deleted the app. I want all my data. Can I get the data? Unfortunately, we can't get the data because it's their data on their phone. Once the app is deleted, it's gone. So the benefit is they have apps absolute control over their own data. And for us as a provider, of course, we would love to see all that data, but because we want to be extra careful about their health data, we ask that to transmit that data to us, we just have them bring in their phone and share what they want to share with us. There might be pieces of that data that maybe they're not comfortable sharing with us, and that's okay. That's part of empowering our patients to uh, take control not only of their health, but their health data as well. For sure. A really important safety reminder for your patients is to protect their phone with a password or a pin. There's lots of different ways to do these now. They're pretty easy to put on there. And it's useful for a lot of different ways. One is just you don't want if your phone gets stolen or missing for anyone to be able to go in there. Also, it prevents butt dials, which is very useful. A lot of apps that have health information, all the ones that that we put out that have health information stored on the app, we have an additional layer of protection for a pin there. And that's important because if you're giving your phone to your kid to play a game, you don't want them accidentally, um, oh, help me out here. What's that called? The auditory thing that you say in prolonged exposure, your imaginary- Imaginal exposure. Thank you. (laughs) You might not want others to hear your imaginal exposure. So these are important things to discuss with your patient, not just data safety, but protecting their privacy. So Julie. Yes, Christy. Say you have a patient that comes in and they say, Dr. Ken, I've been having a lot of trouble with anxiety. Um, I've been drinking a lot to cope with this. I'm having a lot of problems with, with my wife. We're having relationship problems. Based on symptoms your patient is describing, how do you choose what mobile app to prescribe to that patient? I would love to talk about that, but we promised to do this in 10 minutes. So I think we're going to have to save that for another episode. And that's called a teaser, folks. This is real (laughs) professional podcasting here. Next Generation Behavioral Health is produced by the Defense Health Agency. You can learn more about us and our free health resources on Facebook and Twitter at Military Health. Please subscribe and rate us on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts.